Hey guys, uh, Luna Moth here. So, my voice is a lot better. I can actually record video. And I was sent down a rabbit trail today. So, it started with me getting my car this afternoon. And the um, meter on the car read, it looked like this. Whoop. So, it's hard, to, it's kind of hard to see. But the bottom number says 1964. I wish I could, there we go, that's better. 1964. Um, so I got in my car, I saw that, like my attention was drawn to it, and I was like, okay, well, I've been getting dates lately, maybe I should look that date up. So while I was waiting for my car to warm up, I plugged it into the Google, into the Google, um, and what popped up was the 1964 um, earthquake. So I left that page open um, on my phone, and then later I was drawn to when it said 1995. Um, and then after that, I was drawn to 2011. That was like the three numbers that I looked, when, like that my car meter read. So 1964, 1995, 2011. Um, I'm going to go through each one of these. Um, 1964 is... Um, let me find it. The Great Alaska Earthquake and Tsunami of March 27th, 1964. Uh, let's see. At 5.36 p.m. local time, a great earthquake of magnitude 9.2 occurred in Prince William Sound region of Alaska. Earthquake rupture started approximately 25 kilometers beneath the surface and its epicenter about six miles East, uh, okay, so basically this was east of Anchorage. The earthquake lasted approximately 4.5 minutes uh, and is the most powerful recorded earthquake in U.S. history. It is also the second largest earthquake ever recorded next to the um, 9.5 magnitude earthquake in Chile in 1960. The map shows the epicenter of the 1964 Great Alaska Earthquake caused when the Pacific Plate lurched northward underneath the North American Plate. So this is a mega thrust earthquake. This is the earthquake that I've been describing um, that is coming to this world. So I've got more details on it. I'm going to put all the links below in the text box also so you guys can take a look at this for yourself anyway. Uh, known as the Good Friday Earthquake, it was a megathrust quake that began at 5.36 p.m. on Good Friday, um, causing ground fissures, collapsing structures, and tsunamis resulting from the earthquake. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, oh, oh my gosh, okay. Ah, okay, wait. The powerful earthquake caused soil liquefaction in the region. Ground fissures and failures caused major structural damage in several communities. Um, okay, I was just watching, I have it written down here, uh, the Dutch since, Dutch since Dutch whatever, I don't know how to pronounce it, um, the video on, he just put it out last night, I believe, on ground, li li ground liquefaction. Um, and that has to do with the earthquake that was in Japan in 2011, which is the 2011 that I got. Oh my gosh, okay, there, I didn't even connect this until right now. Um, so I was watching that video, and I was like, oh my gosh, when I was being described, like, what the earthquake would be like, I kept getting the word liquid, 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 and I didn't realize that it was talking about ground liquid, ground liquid, <laughs> ground liquidation, it's not that hard, um, until... I saw that video and connected that because um, I thought it was dealing with like how the ground would feel, like it would feel like liquid or jello because I've gotten like a gelatinous or like jello confirmation before of like what it would feel like, um, but I didn't realize that I was being told that it would be ground liquidation. I didn't know that existed. So anyway, um, whew, okay, here we go. <laughs> So the Dutch Sins video is titled, let me find it, um, Japan 2011 Quake Ground Liquefaction 
Remember the past or we will repeat it. So anyways, I saw that video and thought that it was a warning. Um, okay, soil liquefaction on Wikipedia. Um, describes a phenomenon whereby a saturated or partially saturated soil substantially loses strength and stiff stiffness in response to an applied stress, usually earthquake, shaking, or other sudden change in stress condition, causing it to behave like a liquid. Okay, let's see. Phenomenon is most often observed in a saturated, loose, or low-density sandy soils. This is because a loose sand has a tendency to compress when a load is applied. Dense sands, by contrast, tend to expand or dilate. Um, let's see. Uh, the water pressures may build to an extent where they exceeded, where they exceed the contact stresses between the grains of soil that keep them in contact with each other. These contacts between grains are the means by which the weight from buildings and overlying soil layers are, oh, are transferred from the ground surface to layers of soil or rock at greater depths. This loss of soil structure causes it to lose all of its strength, um, the ability, aka the ability to transfer shear stress, um, and it may be observed to flow like a liquid, hence liquefaction. Uh, although the effects of liquefaction have long been understood, it was more thoroughly brought to attention of engineers. Oh, here we go. After the 1964 N Niigata earthquake, the 1964 Alaska earthquake, it was also a major faction in destruction of San Francisco's Marina District during the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake and in Port of Kobe during the 1995 Great Hanshin Earthquake. Okay, when I Googled 1995, the Hanshin Earthquake was the one that first came up, and I couldn't understand the connection to 1964 and 2011 because I was looking at um, the earthquake's magnitude because 1964 and 2011 are both in 9.0 uh, magnitude range, but the 1995 quakes... All quakes that happened during 1995, the largest was 8.0, um, and the Hanshin earthquake was like 6.8. It wasn't even, I mean, that's a large earthquake, but it, compared to 9.0, that's nothing. Okay, this makes sense. Okay, I'm being pointed to ground liquidation, soil liquefaction, coming with this mega thrust earthquake. So this is something we're going to have to be dealing with. Um... Um, I think we're good on this. I think that's what I was supposed to find in there. Okay, so let's move on to the 1995 earthquakes. Um, earthquakes in 1995. Um, Great Hanshin earthquake, or the Kobe earthquake, was an earthquake that occurred on Tuesday, January 17th, 1995 at 5.46 p.m. The timing on that is actually really close. The 1964 earthquake was also like 5.30 p.m. Um southern part of Japan. It measured 6.8 on the moment magnitude scale, um, adjusted from a 7.2. Let's see. Um, approximately 6,434 people lost their lives. Whew. And um, this was Japan's worst earthquake in the 20th century after the Great Kanto earthquake in 1923. Damages cost approximately approximately 10 trillion yen. Okay, so it's funny because this article mentioned nothing, nothing about ground liquidation or soil liquefaction. That's why I was not making that connection. Uh, this is why I say that it's a rabbit trail because it hits me as it comes. Anyway, there's a few other earthquakes um, listed in 1995. I will put the link below. Uh, okay, let's move on to... Uh, 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami. So not only do these three dates have in mind, um, I'm sorry, have in common um, the soil liquef the soil liquefaction, ground liquidation, they also have tsunamis in common. Um, so it was on the Pacific coast of Japan. 
um, undersea mega thrust earthquake off the coast of Japan that occurred at 546. These are all these are all within a few minutes of each other. They all occur between like 5:30 and 5:50. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, on Friday, March 11, 2011, um, epicenter approximately 43 miles east of the, I don't know, it doesn't matter, um, the hypocenter at an underwater depth of approximately 19 miles. Um, earthquake is also referred to as the Great East Japan Earthquake and the 3.8. 11 earthquake, 3.11 earthquake. It was the most powerful earthquake ever recorded to have hit Japan. And the fifth most powerful earthquake in the world since modern record keeping began in 1900. Uh, the earthquake triggered powerful tsunami waves that reached heights of up to 133 feet, 40.5 meters. 133 feet. That's insane. Um, the earthquake actually moved the main island of, of Japan um, eight feet east, and <laughs> the tsunami caused nuclear accidents, primarily the level seven meltdowns at three reactors in the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Um, there were reactors that reactors that suffered explosions due to hydrogen gas that built up with their outer containment buildings after the cooling system failure, resulting from loss of electrical power. Um, okay, well, this makes me think of, okay, California has a few nuclear power plants along its, close, along its coast. Um, closest to, like, the 714 area code would probably be, um, <laughs> wow, I am just having major, massive brain farts today. Um, San Onofre. Uh, we call them the giant boobs <laughs> because they look like boobs. It's like two lumps. Anyway, San Onofre, which to our knowledge is shut down um, and has a bare bones crew just keeping things stable. Um, but there's still just like so much nuclear waste, so much... There's still just so much stuff there. It, it, it's not done. It's not shut down. All of the remnants are still there. Um, there's also a plant in San Diego um, uh, that kind of scares me a little bit concerning the fact that San Onofre is built right on the ocean. <laughs> um, there aren't a ton of residents nearby, honestly. Like, it is situated closer to a marine base or like a land preserve where not a lot of people live, but it's also very close to San Clemente, California, which is a large city full of tons and tons of people, and it's very tightly packed. Um, just the way that the roads are made and everything, it wouldn't be very easy to um, evacuate people from San Clemente, honestly. Anyway. So that's what we've got. We, you guys should be prepared, be ready for liquid soil. <laughs> I don't know how you prepare for that. I don't know how you're ever ready for anything like that. I will link the Dutch Sensei uh, video down below so you can take a look at what it would possibly look like. Um, another thing that caught my eye in the video is that the Japanese people were wearing masks. And I almost... It's like, I feel like that video kind of is like precognition, like, it's like the Ebola epidemic with, like, masks, and, like, we're, like, walking around with masks, and then the ground is liquid, and it's, like, nightmare of nightmares, you know? Um, uh, another thing I found was interesting when I was walking through somewhere today, there was a poster that said, Return of the Walking Dead, that's a TV show, but... Um, it's Return of the Walking Dead, October 12th. Um, I'm going to stop talking now, otherwise I'm just going to hit my time limit and won't be able to make this video. Anyway, um, ground liquidation, soil liquefaction. It's coming.